I am sitting here with Chris from The Real Rideshare Stories. I will have his info linked below if you'd like to go say hello to him on his channel. Uh, we're just going to have a little chat today. So if you've noticed, I haven't really talked much about uh, the unemployment with Uber and Lyft. So I think that's going to be our main focus. I don't know a whole lot about it, which is why I have not talked about it. So let's learn together today, shall we? Um, so Chris, tell me, I guess, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I've done so far. So I'm not sure, um, if you are still earning an income through any of the gigs, you're, you wouldn't be able to collect unemployment, right? Do you know? Um, it's going to depend. You could claim partial, uh, unemployment, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's going to really kind of depend. Um, I mean, it, if there's a certain threshold that you have to meet, I know in New York, it's if you make under X amount of dollars per week, you could apply for partial unemployment. So it's really going to depend. Um, and then also being that it's the PUA, which is the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. And that's really what encompasses and covers all of the gig workers, the yeah. independent contractors, freelancers, and um, self-employed. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit different. There's not a lot of uh, details that have come yes. through yet, at least from how it's going to be on a standpoint from the federal government paying the state and then the state end up uh, passing not only the PUA on to uh, each person who applies, but also then anything that the state may uh, put right. in as well. Um, so that information for the most part is still kind of quiet, mm -hmm. but uh, some states have updated their websites. Uh, quite a few actually have started. Um, there's several websites. Uh, the re easiest website to go on is careeronestop.org, uh, and you can find out unemployment benefits there. Uh, okay. And then you can also click your state and see. It'll direct you to your state's unemployment office uh, mm -hmm. website, as well as how to apply online by the right. phone and um, any updates with the information of what's going on now. Uh, so they give you four links per state, which is really nice. Nice. And um, when you go visit some of those websites, depending on your state, they might say, do not apply yet. Um, mm, other states might say, you can apply now. And okay. some states haven't updated anything yet. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I actually, I did go ahead and try to file for unemployment with my state. Uh, with that being said, I do still intend on working. So, you know, I didn't lie about anything. I said exactly what I was doing. And, you know, I even listed out Instacart and Uber, Lyft, all of that through unemployment. Um, so I don't really know what to expect as far as that goes, but I felt, it, you know, it didn't hurt to try. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, exactly. is a little less right now, which, um, you know, I did have other ways that I was earning money. I had uh, my portrait photography business. So, you know, I'm sure it's just different per each individual. So, I mean, in yeah. your opinion, do you think it would be good for people to go ahead and try to sign up for it? Um, I think that if you're still able to work or want to go out and work, um, mm -hmm. because it's a finite fund, um, they're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars, which sounds like a lot of money, but when you divvy up between um, the 30 or 40 million Americans that they're expecting to go on unemployment, mm -hmm. that $600 a week can dry up pretty quick. Um, so if it, it would be nice to make that money, um, but if you can go out and you can work and you're still getting good gigs okay. um, and you're still able to go out and do that because <clears throat> That's also going to help with the community itself because mm -hmm. Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart, all these different gigs are still considered essential services right. because they're either trying to transport people, supplies, um, or food delivery to people yeah. who can't get out and, uh, or don't want to get out or are confined. Um, so it's, it's still a very good thing and there is still a lot of demand out there. Um, but yeah, if you are laid off for a particular reason, maybe mm -hmm. your job laid you off, 
and you're doing gigs on the side as well, but you're seeing a substantial decrease in your pay, right. apply. See if you can get the partial unemployment. Um, if you have uh, somebody in your fa- like you or your family um, who have to take some time off because of they could be susceptible or immune disease or anything like that, then you probably want to try to apply for unemployment. Um, so yeah, just, you know, be, be respectful, I guess, because yeah. uh, I see, it's I, everybody. I, I, you're right. I didn't really think of it that way, but it's more mm-hmm. like the, the socially responsible thing to do is if you can work to go out and work, I guess. That, yeah. That and kind of sense. if you got to apply for, for partial payment, apply for partial payment um, right. or whatever it is. So you can bake your bills uh, because I don't want to see anybody lose their home or, or their apartment or, you know, get fall back on bills that are a problem. Um, right. Because, yeah, there a lot of places are giving forgiveness, whether it's ex- extensions or loan forgiveness in terms of the next six months you might sure. not have to pay uh, or rent uh, measures where, where you don't have to pay your rent for the time being. But mm-hmm. once this is all done, what is that going to look like? Are you still going to have to pay, you know, three months worth of rent the next month are you, are, is the government going to pay for that? Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's pay your bills. And if you can't pay your bills, do what you can to, to not like to, to see what you can at least put off for the time being. Mm-hmm. Um, but then apply if you need at that point, then I'd say too. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That, that's, that makes total sense to me. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, <sighs> Here's here's a thought though. So let's say um, someone is Uber driving right now and they do get sick. Um, I, I've had a thought and tell me what you think about this, but I've thought that it might be kind of hard for someone to get a test to actually prove to Uber that they do qualify for the, um, the payout that they're doing for uh, the virus, mm-hmm. but yeah, this, this, well, the sick pay, yeah, it's, uh, it's been tough. I've heard that they are paying out. I've seen people on Facebook that are receiving payments. Uh, people have that reached didn't out even to get me. tested or they were, tested? um, I don't know if they got tested or not, but I know that they were, there's th- there's four <laughs> criteria that you have to meet. Um, one is yes. If you get tested and come back positive, uh, right. but there's also, if you get, um, uh, quarantined by a medical or health professional, uh, that doesn't mean you have to be tested for it. That just means you're quarantined and you get a sheet of paper or anything from that, uh, which can you can give to your employer, you can give right. to Uber or Lyft, uh, you can give for the sick pay. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like the proof in the pudding that yeah. there's a health professional telling you that you need to stay home. Uh, so yeah, you might have to uh, get one of those things. Some people have had to go to Twitter to try to get paid uh, and blast Uber on that. So mm-hmm. it's, it, it's, it's That's tough. Sad. That's yeah, sad. it really is. Especially but, if they are sick. Right. Um, I mean, what I, my point here, what I was kind of circling around to okay. was that maybe it would almost be good for people to kind of go ahead and get their name in that those unemployment systems just in case something like that were to happen where, okay, even if you do get your payout through Uber, what is it? 14 days, right? I mean, yeah. what are you doing after that 14 days? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you would probably need to be collecting unemployment after that. And as far as I know, that takes some time to really get going. Yeah, so. it can. It depends on the state. Um, I know like in New York state, uh, where I am, they're actually starting to pay out on unemployment for gig workers already. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, you know, they just started paying out recently um, mm-hmm. within like the last day or two. But uh, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a hard game out there right now um, because if you're, especially if you're doing Uber and Lyft, uh, trying to transport people because you're not social distancing at least far enough um, although I know people are putting partitions up, people are not allowing more than two people in the car at the time. Right. Um, so they're, they're doing a lot of different things to try to minimize the contact that you have with people. Mm-hmm. Um, but, 
you know, things like DoorDash and Instacart where, you know, you might be around more people, but you can still distance yourself somewhat versus not being in a car yeah. uh, and versus being in a car uh, can be a lot different. So when it comes to the, to the applying, um, you got to make the best decision for yourself and, and look to, to kind of see how it's going to impact you overall. Mm-hmm. So if you're, like I said, if you're a worker who is, you know, working from home and you can still work from home, that's great. Continue to do that. Um, if you're a gig worker or freelancer or whatnot, and you see your um, pay substantially decrease because of what's going on around, um, then yeah, you probably will want to apply uh, because like I said, you want to make sure you can offset your, your income so you can yeah. still pay your bills, you can still get food on the table and you know, take care of what you have to take care of. Yeah, nice, great. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, okay. I was thinking, so I don't personally have my gig work set up as a business, but I know, I think some people do that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm wondering if you have that set up as a business entity, if you would maybe qualify for some of these business grants, like, uh, right now, Colorado, they have a business grant that I applied for for my photography business, uh, the SBA, Small Business Association. Mm -hmm. Um, They also have, um, it's a low interest loan, but more than likely those are going to be forgiven, or maybe they are. I'm not sure exactly what the legislation was on that, but I wonder if gig workers would qualify for some of those um, small business loans and grants. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, uh, apparently they are. Really? Um, apparently, because I've gotten emails from both Uber and Lyft stating that um, they're handing out, uh, here, I'll, actually, I'll open them up right now. Um, See, it would help if, if I, I paid get the attention correctly. to Uber and Lyft's emails, and maybe I would actually have some of these answers, but... <laughs> um, yeah, they both, they both gave emails. Um, I'll open up Ubers first. Um, they said, where was it? The government has been authorized to make new types of small business loans available to the self-employed, including independent workers without full-time jobs. These loans may be used to cover expenses such as auto loan payments. So this is from Uber stating that... Okay. Um, they're apparently, but I don't think that's really the meaning for them. I think it's more for like, um, if you own a business and you have have to either close, but you still owe rent, you still owe gas, you still owe your utilities. I think it's more weird for that. Um, But I'm sure that some people are going to be uh, independent workers from gig workers who are like, oh yeah, let's try and get a loan. Um, you get you giggled a little bit because you didn't like the idea of people uh, taking that little loophole, did you? Is it? Uh, well, seems- I, I th- it's what I said earlier too. It's uh, you know if you have to or if you can continue to work and you can right. still make good money, then go out and work. Don't go out for unemployment. It's it's kind of it's right. the same thing. There's so many small businesses out there uh, that are Actually, very hurting right now right. because. Yeah you might think that they have a lot of money to them or that they can continue paying their employees. But Mm -hmm. those are huge expenses that people have to take into consideration. And I would, I don't want to see people have to close their doors because yeah. of something um so yeah i chuckled a little bit on that because yeah i'm a small business Sorry, owner I'm, as well not too. Try, I'm not trying to get people to go to go steal uh money from the <laughs> government or anything. no 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 I'm, I'm just saying because like because i have a, a different perspective like i have a small business as well so right. uh, i'm a small business owner so will i apply for that uh loan for my business yes i will i will mm-hmm. be i'm actually going to probably be doing that later today yeah um, the I, sba but, yeah good luck the thing is it sucks <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure but you know it's if this lasts too long i may have to close my doors because of all the the costs that are still going to yeah. incur even though it's closed and i still have to pay that um so i have to look at probably getting a loan and that's why like 
I say with the, the whole independent contractor, it's like, yeah, okay, your car might be, be needing work or something, but that's, you know, you got to make sure you save that money or do some other gigs as well, or, you know, go to Instacart where you're not going to be putting on so many miles um, yes. on your car, things like that, Th mm -hmm. you know, be smarter on what you're doing. Right. No, that's, so. that's fair. Those are all very fair points. And I mean, for your sake, I hope that nothing like that happens to your business and you can keep on floating as long as yeah. this lasts, you know? Yeah. Same here. So. And if, if it's a long-term thing, it's, it's going to be tough. Absolutely. Um, if it's a short-term thing, like hopefully by April 30th, things get back to, to normal. Mm -hmm. um, that would be much better. Uh, but all these ch charts and things that they're showing is it's going to be longer than that, or at least yeah. that's going to be the peak. That's what it um, seems like. So hopefully things do tra transition. But, you know, I, I like to, to think if somebody needs that help, then by all means, it's there. Take advantage of it. Yeah. But uh, don't try to be like, oh, I'm getting a $1,200 check. Oh, I have two kids, so they're $500 each. Oh, I can get $600 plus maybe state unemployment and I can apply for a loan. Um, that's just, you know, trying to, to exploit the system and um, not be right. responsible. To, you are to, right. Yeah. You know. I mean, like now, I said, if you, if you need it, take it. True. Yeah. Um, now tell me as far as uh, you personally uh, with the gigs, what are your plans? What are you doing now? Um, what, what are well, your thoughts? So I was um, driving Uber and Lyft. My market hasn't really been hit much. Um, I mean, it has. Let's be Yes, I, I'm in Buffalo, um, Western New York region. So it's six hours from the city driving. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the other side of the state by Niagara Falls and the Great Lakes now. Yeah. So my market, it's been affected, yes, but there's so many less drivers driving and there's still people who are looking for rides. And anytime I go on the app, there's some surge on the app somewhere. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, going on to gigs like Instacart or DoorDash um, mm -hmm. or Amazon Flex, that's still strong. I mean, I open up Instacart and I can see five, six batches available. And then within a few minutes, there's going to be four or five more. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, ten, five minutes later, mm -hmm. there's four or five more that come in on top of that. So it's like you can pick and choose when yeah. you want to go out and what you want to do. Uh, Delivery apps, so many restaurants because they're takeout only or delivery only, they're resorting to Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats um, mm -hmm. to try to continue to get delivery because they've never had to deliver before, uh, right. especially for sit down restaurants or things like that. Um, so it's going to be very difficult for them. And that just means that more people are ordering in and getting it delivered, which, you know, you can still make a lot of money doing that. And then Amazon Flex is actually a pretty cool thing too, where you can mm. deliver packages and you don't have to run the risk of even interacting with anybody because you go to the warehouse, pick up your packages, follow the, the map, and you, you have a good time and you just take pictures of the packages. You don't even really have to hand them to people. Right. Um, so it's, Very it's low even better risk. that way. Yeah. Um, cool. And Do you have preference? Do you, do you like, like one over the other, at least like right now at this point in time or? Um, I like, I like Amazon flex. Uh, okay. I think that that's one you think. Yeah. I like it because uh, one, you see how much you're, you're making right. uh, through, through the batch. You kind of have some good information there. Um, then, you know, falling back, you go to say Instacart because you can pick and choose the orders. So if you're brand yeah. new to it, you can choose a small order to, right. to kind of get, get your feet wet. And then once you kind of really know what you're doing, you could take those bigger orders mm -hmm. and at least you'll kind of kind of know better. But starting out, don't go right to, to the $70 order with 100 items. So, um, okay, so hold off for just a second here because you've talked about these big orders with me. And it, I just want to tell you guys, we also did a video call on Chris's channel. So make sure you take a look at that. Um, mm -hmm. But you did talk about these or the larger orders. And I'm wondering 
first of all, I think maybe your market may be a little bit better than mine. I'm in Denver. I think my market is still pretty good for Instacart, but um, I don't see orders that big. So the biggest order, and I wonder if it also depends on if you are new or not. So maybe they don't push those larger orders to newer people. Um, Cause I'm looking right now, I have a $10, a $15, $11 and a $10. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the most yeah, I just... ever see is like 25, 30. I think I saw a 30, but I never see like 70 or 80. Um, that, that is, those are rare, but those yeah. are also your, your 50, $60 orders that you get. So mm-hmm. like right now I'm looking at my app too, and I see 14 items, 14 item, or I'm sorry, 14 units, uh, 14 units, 48 units, oh, that's, uh, 28 yeah, that's units, 30 one. units. Uh, and this 48 unit one, it's $19.72. It's a full service order. And, oh, there is a tip. There's a $5 tip on there. Uh, I was going to say for, for a 48 one. Um, and then it just up, updated. Yeah. Yeah. And then it ju- just updated 24 units, 14, 25, 19, 37. So, so uh, yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's probably going to depend, depend on your market and where you're driving. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in certain areas, you probably are going to see that. Um, also families, I like larger families, you tend to see larger orders because, you know, if you go to the grocery store shopping normally and you see a family with a, a shopping cart that's filled to the brim with stuff, you know, they have a larger family yeah. and um, the other person might uh, like uh, somebody who's got uh, just themselves or, you know, them and one other person or something, their shopping cart is much less. Um, right. So it, I think that plays into it as well too. Um but yeah, I mean, I, I've seen, I think the highest I've seen was 74 items, um, yeah. which is pretty crazy nonetheless. Yeah, you know, I think I interrupted you and we got completely off course. I'm not even sure what you were saying before I interrupted you. <laughs> uh, we were going through like my preferences on, on apps right oh, now. Oh yeah, okay. Um, okay. So yeah, it was, I started with Amazon Flex and then yeah. I'm saying the next one is probably Instacart. Um, and then probably going to, to the food delivery apps yeah. uh, just to, because um, so, like sometimes the food delivery isn't always the best because if you got to wait for the order, you go in, you, you got to wait for it to come in and you, it could take uh, quite a bit of time. Like actually I, it's, it's funny. Uh, I just, I'll show you a screenshot that I have. Um, this is one that was sent to me, not to, that I actually took. Um, so I don't know if you can see this, but this is from Uber Eats right here. Back up just a, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, there it is. All right, right there. Yeah, so it yeah. shows, it's like a, a three or $3.80 order. Um, okay. And it's 23 minutes total that they're expecting. Okay, so it's no, like, that's not okay. Something like that. Yeah, it's like that, that order no, is going to be taken. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like some of these orders, um, so, and that's, that's the, that's the drawback and issue I see when it comes to, um, some of those orders and even right. like going to McDonald's through the drive through it's like, no, I don't want to do that. I got stuck doing that a couple of times when Uber Eats started, uh, in my area and I was, had such a sour taste in my mouth. I'm like, I'll never take a McDonald's order or- again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause uh, usually this is at like one, two in the morning when they close the dining room. So you'd have mm-hmm. to go and pick it up and they didn't make the order until somebody was there. And it was like sitting in line either through the drive through or if it was actually open, you still have to wait, you know, 15, 20 minutes for the order. And it's just like, mm-hmm. no, thanks. Move on. <laughs> yeah. That is not worth it. Definitely. Yeah. not. So well, cool. <laughs> um, I just want to ask if you had anything else you wanted to add. I think I've, I've got all the info I was looking for from you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, uh, like I said, for the unemployment, um, if you need to, to go on to unemployment or need anything, great resource is careeronestop.org. Um, I've been saying that on my channel. I know a lot cool. of other channels have been using that website as well too. Um, and it's a great resource to get um, for a job for unemployment. So if you're looking for, for new work or if you're looking for something new, it's a great resource. It's sponsored by the Department of Labor. So it's a national um, 
website designed and working with the Department of Labor. Um, okay. And that's good. And then it'll have your state's website. And if you do need to apply for unemployment for any particular reason, then make sure to follow what that website says. So if they haven't updated their systems yet, chances are if you apply, it'll probably get denied. Um, mm. So you have to keep continually checking because there's quite a few websites out there that haven't updated their state's uh, site yet. Um, some specifically state do not apply yet. They'll let you know when to apply. You can continue looking at your state's website if that's the case. Um, and they're also going to uh, show media or I'm sorry, uh, update news media outlets so your local news stations will start mm -hmm. showing when it will be okay to apply. So don't apply yet for those sites uh, because it'll kick back as negative and you'll have to mm. redo the entire thing again. Oh, good and, to know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then for certain states that are already taking it, um, then and okay to go, then do what you have to do, fill out the application. If you got a call or anything like that, make sure you do because uh, it's gonna be uh, pretty hard to get through with the call. Um, and then also one last thing when it comes to applying for unemployment, I recommend doing it online, mm -hmm. apply online, because trying to apply over the phone, there's millions of people who are out of work and looking for unemployment right now as well. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you can do uh, it through the internet first. And then mm. if you do have to call to verify anything or get anything going, at least all of that paperwork is already in and ready to yeah. go. And um, that way, if there's any issues too on the phone, if you get disconnected and you're mid process, um, you might have to restart that entire application again. Oh, that would be so, uh, terrible. Yeah, it's, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, I do recommend doing that online when you are available and able to on your state's website. Again, follow cool. what your state says. Yeah, nice. Wow, you are just a bundle of information. I really appreciate it. So thank oh, no you problem. for coming and talking to me and my people who I can't educate about unemployment because I don't pay attention to stuff like that. <laughs> so I do. Uh, no worries. Yeah. I, I wanted to, the whole thing on my channel is I've been doing updates and things like that. So I've been really following it because there's so many people out there who just don't know uh, mm -hmm. and are looking for what they can do. Uh, yeah. and some people don't even know. I was talking to a friend of mine and she didn't even know that you could file uh, for unemployment, uh, being a gig worker and she does Instacart. So she didn't even know, um, that you were able to do that. So it's, right. yeah, a lot of people just don't know and getting the, the, the information out there as well as yeah. as much correct information as you can. Cause there's a lot of crap out there too. <laughs> of course. Of course. Cool. So, well, well, yeah. Thanks for having me on stuff. And yeah, uh, <laughs> we tell everybody, uh, where to find you one more time. Oh yeah. Yeah. YouTube channel is called Real Rideshare Stories. So if you haven't seen that channel yet, uh, head over to Real Rideshare Stories. That's my channel. Uh, mm -hmm. We do a lot of crazy stuff. Right now, it's a lot of updates with what's going on, uh, especially in the gig economy itself, because so many people are unsure. But normally what we do is, yes, yeah, some different news articles that come out from Uber or Lyft, um, tips and tricks for passengers and drivers, uh, and now maybe a little bit more in the gig economy. And then also what actually happens on some rides. So uh, nice. some crazy things that actually occur there. So head over cool. to Real Ride Share Stories and check it out. All right, I will leave his info linked below, but thanks so much for watching and I will see you later. Thanks, Chris.